be ill or in a lie, she won't keep a lucky. Peter shall shame because we all call on a man. Okay. I welcome you all with love. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about some nuances in regard to diabetes. Now, in my book, there is a cure for diabetes which you can get anywhere, including at the tree. I mentioned that an animal-based uh, uh, diet increases the rate of diabetes by 35 to 50%. That's pretty significant. What I want to look at today is a little bit deeper insight into why that's the case. The traditional since 1975, a view is that it, it's a saccharine disease. It's from sugar, and clearly eating a lot of sugar causes a problem, and even protein breaks down into sugar eventually. But before 1975, they actually had an insight that it was fat. And now newer and newer research has come out that has us to, to have to take a look at that. In fact, what I would, would say is diabetes in general is a genetic, an epigenetic downgrade in, in which we have an increase in insulin and leptin resistance and an increase in chronic inflammation. So if we are to heal diabetes and prevent diabetes, and we're talking about type 2 in specific here, we need to reverse that epigenetic and genetic downgrade, disappear, make disappear insulin resistance and leptin resistance, and decrease the chronic inflammation. Now once you understand those principles, then it gets very clear why a plant-based diet is a more powerful way to do it. We know this, a plant-based diet is far less inflammatory than an animal-based diet, meat, fish, chicken, and dairy is what I'm talking about. So immediately we're going to decrease the inflammation. And in, in my research, with 120 people, I found that when people actually entered our diabetes recovery program, the rate of inflammation measured with C-reactive protein, a lab test, decreased about five-fold. That's huge, because inflammation is the driving force behind that chronic degenerative force of diabetes. So that's a starting point. Another thing is a meat-based diet generally creates more tissue acidity. And the newer research shows that uh, the more acid your tissues are, they, uh, there's a 56% increase in diabetes. Okay. Now, a third thing before I get to the main thing I'm talk about is the whole issue of when we cook food, we create ages, okay, which is when uh, protein and glucose fuse unnaturally, and also fructose. And th that um, unnatural fusing together from baking and frying and uh, uh, roasting uh, uh, the flesh-based food actually increases the amount of ages in your system. Actually, even with milk for babies, there's a 200% increase in ages. Here's the punchline. The more ages uh, a child has or an adult has, the more likely they are to get diabetes. So ages means advanced glycation in products. It actually ages you. Advanced glycation in products. So, that's a key thing. So when we're cooking our food, baking our food, roasting our food, grilling our food, we're increasing ages and 
when you eat it, those agents go into you and they increase your rate, uh, your potential to get diabetes. Perhaps most important is in bottled milk for, for babies. Now, that being said, I'm going to look at some other things about plant-based food. First, it's fat toxicity. Animal fat toxicity. I'm being very specific. This is not a problem. And I don't know what the reason is. It's not a problem for plant-based fat. It's only animal-based. So it increases inflammation. It actually blocks the GLUT4 receptors on the cell wall so that the insulin can't get in. The result is uh, the increase in animal fat increases insulin resistance because the insulin can't get in because the fat blocks the GLUT4 receptors which take in the insulin and its ability to carry glucose in. That's pretty significant. Once inside, the animal fat actually disrupts the signaling of insulin and leptin. So that's another thing that increases the, the tendency for diabetes. It turns out the newer research is showing that animal fat is actually toxic to the beta cells. The beta cells of the pancreas are what make insulin. So we're eating the animal fat actually is a poison. It destroys the beta cells of the pancreas. Well that's a pretty by itself, that's a good enough reason to say, well, yeah, an animal-based diet is going to cause 35 to 50 percent more diabetes. Ooh, boom, right there. So, the other thing, uh, one of the other things is that plant-based uh, uh, protein is higher in fiber. And low fiber is uh, uh, associated with increased diabetes. Again, we're, all, we're talking primarily about type 2 diabetes. Another thing that's interesting that isn't talked about hardly at all, and is perhaps more important for men, is that animal protein is higher in estrogen. And actually estrogen increases the rate of diabetes, and particularly so for men. Most people don't know that, but when I'm working with diabetes, and for men, almost all of them need more of a, uh, have some kind of uh, I use herbs that increase the amount of testosterone uh, because of the estrogen is throwing, the, 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 the insulin converts testosterone to estrogen. So that's not a good thing. So the more we can build the testosterone, we reverse that higher estrogen process. So we've looked at fat as a literally toxin to the beta cells of the pancreas. We looked at it, it increases insulin resistance, it blocks the ability of insulin to get into the cells, the GLUT4 receptors, it interferes with the signaling of insulin leptin once inside the cells, it is more inflammatory, has lower fiber. And as an overall result, we are going to indeed increase the rate of diabetes, 35 50 percent. So I hope these insights help you. There's one other little point I'm thinking about and that little point is animal protein is higher in leucine and methionine and that accelerates the aging process and diabetes is accelerated aging. So if we accelerate the aging process uh, by eating more meat and therefore getting more leucine and methionine that doesn't work so well for us. And the research shows that it disrupts what we call the mTOR pathway. The mTOR pathway is a, a genetic pathway that when we're in it, which is 35 to 70 grams of protein, it creates an anti-cancer effect and it creates an anti-aging effect. So again, we're talking about aging and diabetes as a result, or diabetes is enhanced aging, accelerated aging. One other thing about the aging is that with age, uh, fat, animal fat becomes more toxic to our, our overall system, uh, and particularly the beta cells of the pancreas.
So when we see this big picture, it becomes more obvious why, again, if you want to prevent diabetes or reverse diabetes, both of which are our focus, one wants the lower on the food chain. So may everybody be blessed with this a little bit more refined understanding of how we go about preventing and reversing diabetes, particularly in our program uh, where we are indeed reversing diabetes. In fact, what they found is a few, uh, another piece of research, which I kind of find interesting, is metformin is considered a, a, a pretty good anti-diabetic drug, and it's effective about 31% of the time, but going on a natural diet that we're talking about, plant-based diet, is 100% effective in reversing and, and preventing diabetes type 2. So may you be blessed with these insights and inspired to reconsider your diet and the move from a plant, from an animal-based diet to a plant-based diet. May you be blessed with health and joy in your life.